Okay, sorry for the delay. <coughs> Some technical difficulties this morning. Trying to uh, launch what we're trying to do, but we can pivot. We're all we're good. Um, so this week's code of conduct is to maintain cleanliness and condition of our vehicles and equipment. It's a good reminder just to everybody this week trying to go through, throw away any unnecessary trash that might be in your equipment uh, or vehicles that you uh, are assigned to. You know, it's a good time to power wash if it's going to cool down a little bit after all that salt that was been thrown down, things like that. Try to keep our vehicles in good, clean, orderly condition. So safety news, 132 days with another week. We had a close encounter this past week, but I was able to keep it first aid, a uh, little sprained shoulder, means of egress, accessing things, just good reminder um, to try to keep everything kind of in the power zone. When we overreach or overstep is when we put ourselves in danger. Try to keep everything in that power zone, knees to shoulders, knees to shoulders. Uh, that's a good reminder. Um, this week, we we're just going to show through the app, but we had a hard time. But hopefully, if anyone that has the app, hopefully got kind of a quick alert before we started this morning. Is um, Ron in the concrete, all the guys decided to use or using a different type of uh, uh, form release called BioSlide. So I kind of wanted to show quickly how that process is used to hopefully send all the alert, the information out to everybody using the app and then how to use the app to access um, that form release agent. Um, so you would go under safety, helpful links, and it's SDS and then QZ into our website. And then our website has this link. So we could kind of quickly just kind of go over it together, just some quick brief training. You know, there's nothing, it's not like any really hazardous chemical. All it is is a, a health hazard. Is our exposure so here's here's what <laughs> Jim, turn the other screen around we'll look at that one that's weird Voila. Okay. So it's called BioSlide. We have a 55 gallon jump of it. Ronnie, where is it located right now? Is it in your bay? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, I think Jim, Jim, Jim might have got it. Chico, Chico got the delivery. Chico here? It's in the concrete bay. It's in the concrete bay. Okay. So we got a bulk storage of this thing. It's it's new to us, so it's a good to, good refresher of how it should be labeled. Again, under the new regulations, we need to make sure we know the proper pictograms. It's a health hazard. The one on the previous slide is the guy with kind of the the heart with the hole in it and expanding because it has an inhalation hazard to us. So it's a category one that's not really all that harmful to us, only if we get it contact and then if we decide to drink it. Okay, so it's very kind of a common sense hazard. I, I got some in my eye. Am I okay? Okay, well, let's let's go through that task. Thank you, Larry. First aid measures. Eye contact. Flush eyes with plenty of water for 15 minutes while holding eyelids open. Seek medical attention if need if. If irritation persists. Oh, I'm in trouble. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Safety glasses might be a good idea for this type of chemical. Um, one of the biggest things that you see with some of this formerly soil and the other one is is in when we go down, it really section eight is really what we want to focus on for everybody in the field. And this is our exposure controls. It lets us really know what our engineering control should be. Again, using the hierarchy of controls how we want to try to eliminate this from being a hazard to our workers. So through engineering controls, avoid breathing spray mist, use local exhaust ventilations, ensure adequate ventilation, especially in confined spaces. Okay, this is one of those things that can overcome us the more we use it, say, in a, in a basement or things like that. Um, it could be a, a respiratory or an eye issue uh, moving forward. So it tells you kind of like personal protective equipment at the end, skin contact, None typically required eye protection, none typically required again, but if you are going to have contact safety glasses, 
is a good one to do. And then the general hygiene measures, always wash your hands. The stuff gets on your skin. Take it off. It could create dermatitis and things like that. So Section 8 is, is really important when you look at an SDS for any new chemical. Go to that <coughs> Section 8. Again, under the new regulations, these are all going to look the same now. And then just with hazard communication, just make sure everything's labeled. Everybody is aware of the chemical that we're, we're using. You can always refer back to uh, using the app to find all this information. It's all by alphabetical, and you can actually stream it through the name of the chemical or the manufacturer. It's pretty, pretty user-friendly, and then these sheets pop right up, and you can look at it right on your phone or device if you have internet connection. What's, what's the plus size side of using this eraser? That's just a newer technology from when I quickly read up on it. I know uh, why we, we decided to go it. I don't know, but it, it showed up and we're supposed to we're going to use it. So I wanted to make sure I educated everybody on it. You know, it's really looking at this versus the Harris that we use. It's pretty similar. It's supposed to this one's supposed to like be a, a little bit supposed to work a little bit better from what Jim told me. Uh, Mr. Matt, when I go to the emergency room with a problem, do I have to bring this with me or do they have access to it? It's a good idea. If you do have to go to emergency, say you swallow it, you drink it by accident. That's probably the only case of which we would have to go to emergency room. Yes, I would bring this SDS or if you had a smartphone, you would be able to bring that with you and show them this chemical and they can look it up. And they could actually get the physical properties, chemical properties of actually – well, actually, that's that's what it does with, with specific gravity, like had has done in the past, or boiling point or flash point. You know, this is it's kind of flammable, not too too bad. 350 degrees is when this will ignite, uh, but it does break it down up top with the <laughs> composition of chemicals, uh, the hazard ID. I think on the bottom here. In, in this section here, definitely healthcare would like to look at that. Because this was a problem when I did rescue back in the 80s and 90s. We brought a patient to the hospital. What is this stuff? Right. Yep. For sure. Mm -hmm. No. Yep. Health effects, target, you know, if you do drink it, what, what are some of the target <laughs> lungs? Um, indigestion, inhalation, you know, they they kind of, they all kind of put it all out there and that will help them, the healthcare medical providers be able to give you the best care that you need if something like that happened. They had to protect themselves if there was yeah. material. Yeah. And, and yeah, and exactly. Yeah, especially if it's yeah. induced vomiting was part of the, the remedy for that. So transport's not a problem I see there. Yeah, non-hazardous classification. For the most part, this would just be a labeling thing for us, making sure we got proper labels on this new, and, and, and it tells us right up top. It should come with those labels already on it. Yep. But again, when we buy a 55-gallon drum, what are we doing? We're transforming it into our little sprayers. We want to make sure our, our pump sprayers have proper wording and labeling into the new of the pictograms. It's the health hazard, and we want to say that word danger. So it could say form release oil, danger with that with that with that pictogram right on it. And we can write bio slide per the manufacturer's recommendation from this company. So this example, and hopefully we'll kind of continue this as new stuff because it's uh, technology and construction materials is always changing. We're always updating stuff. So hopefully this will be kind of become our new normal uh, uh, program that we will alert you on the app and we can go out and, and do some training in the field or have a safety meeting like this just to kind of educate everybody on the, what your potential exposures are when it comes to uh, uh, hazard communication. Is there any questions? Nope. Okay. Is there an alert? Yeah, I did send I out a quick mine. alert. Okay. For some reason, I didn't. No? I still got the old alert on safety harnesses. Oh. Did you get one? Okay. No, no alert. Okay. Well, we'll look into that. All right. There you go, Ken. This is the revised one. Did we revise this? Oh, okay. What do you want? I didn't think okay, never mind. <laughs> was there something I was supposed to do? I thought I sent another photo this morning. Oh, well, I'll try. So, corporate announcements all I get is that don't forget that Wednesday is Valentine's Day. Don't want you guys in trouble <laughs> on Thursday morning. <laughs> okay, the mobile app is displayed there. And if you don't have it, certainly it's just a really easy, good way way to be connected.
if you have a company phone, you really should have it on there. Now, technical tips, we've been talking about scales, and I just wanted to finish that, wrap that up with talking about metric scales. Oops, left the typo in there. Uh, the six common metric scales are the, basically they're, they're ratios, just like any other scale, but they're identified as 1 in 100, 1 in 200, 250, 300, just like they have here. And you can go and measure, say, on 200 scale, uh, this would be 5 meters, or you can even figure fractions. So you can also, of course, go 20, 2,000, you can adjust easily. So, and metric systems are still used on some drawings. We did a project last week with metric on it. So we get that job, you'll be out there. We'll have to get a bunch of metric scales. <laughs> the projects we're profiling this week is the Adelaire HDD project in Thompson, New York, or Monticello, New York. I think Monticello is a village within the town of Thompson. They were contracted with this company, Adelaide, to install a 20-inch diameter by 400-foot-long sleeve for waterline in Thompson, New York. The sleeve is to be installed below a state highway by HDD, horizontal directional drilling, and includes tie-ins and pressure testing. The pilot board was completed with our ditch witch uh, JT100 all-terrain, followed by a 12-inch ream and 18-inch ream, roughly. I think it might be a 19-inch ream. And then our Vermeer 330 by 500 has been mobilized to site and will start, it probably has, is starting, I think, today to ream that out bigger up to a, a 30 inch or maybe a 32, I'm not sure the exact size. And then pulling the product pipe. So ground conditions along the board pro profile consists mostly of bedrock. And the water line will serve a new casino development, uh, resort development in Adelaide. He's <laughs> the developer. So, of course, this time of year, Especially with uh, lots of drilling fluid, which we use on the bigger drills. We have the reclaimer all enclosed in plastic there and heated with our uh, flameless heaters. And uh, here's just a couple of shots on the site here. And handling some drill steel. And that much, I don't think that's a product pipe, or maybe it is. And then uh, I had a picture here of uh, the drill, but it was with Pat Wells in it. but. <laughs> we don't have it here right now. So then uh, photos from the archives. We have uh, this gas crossing project, Montville, Connecticut. Remember that, Gene? I do. I remember the snowstorm we came back in. Oh, yeah. It was bad. In the old days, they were bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> back in 2001. So, good. All right. Well, oh, we got checks and... These things, these checks weigh a little heavier, I think. A little heavier than they were last week, I believe. Good luck out there, and make sure you check these checks. Hell. How are you? Thank you, Kevin. Ten months in. Matt Orzlag.